Different Gravy, not just another Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm one of the hosts, Richard Miller, and my co-host, he packed his bags last night, pre-flight, zero hours, 9 a.m., and he's going to be high, 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 after a Wednesday win. Uh, our very own rocket man, Dr. Luke Gledall. How are you doing today, Luke? I'm really good, Rich. How are you today? <laughs> I'm all right. I couldn't decide whether I was going to like no sell that and not sing. And then I just decided to launch into the uh, a bit of half hearted singing. So there we go. But um, Beautiful. I-, I should explain top of the show, you, uh, you're maybe a slightly muffled man and we may get uh, announcements and things like that because you're actually in in the airport as we just- I am. <laughs> I'm at uh, YYC, Calgary Airport. So I'm just uh, getting, well, getting a long time ready. So taking a bit of time <clears throat> excuse me in between to uh do the podcast with you today and then uh, i'll be flying to amsterdam amsterdam to manchester so uh yeah i'll be hopefully all being good and uh no no gremlins in my closet closet coming out again that's a popular <laughs> phrase isn't it gremlins in yeah the we're always talking about gremlins in the closet <laughs> <laughs> are any gremlin bar any those pesky gremlins coming out from their closets uh, i should be should be in the UK. Um, Super. Back, back home for the first time in three years. Wow. And next next week, next week, we'll be doing the first live in person. In person, different gravy. In person, different gravy. So, Can you imagine such a thing? Watch all that chemistry we built up by not being in the same place. <laughs> Just go out the window when we... Exactly, yeah. Stuff. This mm-hmm. is not like talking to a computer. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Just a very current uh, undercurrent of uh, yeah of social social uh, inaptitude uh, all the way through the next uh, next step. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So there we go. So yeah. So Luke is wearing. This is also a first in that you're. The, this is the first uh, podcast recording with a mask on, uh, which is good. I've not worn mm-hmm. mine out of sympathy because uh, I don't know. I just didn't feel that sympathetic. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So it explains the sort of slightly different timbre to uh, to this week's episode. But uh, thankfully, there's a fair amount to get into, and it's um, it's been a fairly positive, bubbly week in the in the world of Wednesday. So, uh, are you happy to move along to a bit of a news a news footing, Luke? Let's get cracking. Breaking hoo hoo's. Hoo hoo's to be to be broken. Uh, obviously, the major chunk is uh, is is the midweek match with Pompeii. Uh, we showed those. Stupid uh, people that couldn't get away from a volcano <laughs> eruption. <laughs> what for? Um, but uh, <laughs> before we get to that, there's a few other bits and pieces, bits and pieces to attend to. So um, we with this. Uh, so we, there's a couple of players that have joined s- supposedly the, the under 23s. Um, I say supposedly. I'll explain the supposedly in a moment. But Jaden Onan, who was going to sign earlier in the season, I believe. There was lots of talk of him coming in pre-season, or there was some talk of him coming in pre-season. But a, an attacking midfielder, did he even play, did he maybe play against Celtic or something like that? Am I misremembering? I Maybe he did. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm misremembering as well. So, Fair yeah, enough. I'm in the same place that you are in, Rich. But uh, 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 yeah, so he, he's he's twenty years old. Um, he's come through the academy at Arsenal, uh, and uh, yeah, been added to the the under twenty threes squad there. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one is is Kwame Boateng, um, and or Boateng. Uh, he's twenty three years old, <laughs> so mm-hmm. I do wonder if he is more of a he's a presumably closer to a first team berth than than Onan is um i don't know what uh, what value there is in bringing in a 23 year old for the under 23s presumably he can play 
I think they're, they're fairly generous in what your 23rd, you know, your 23rd year entails. Uh, so he could have the season, but uh, you've got to imagine if if there's a worth in bringing him in. Potentially, he's he's someone that might might be on the cusp of, especially, especially given our poor um, our poor numbers defensively, he might be on the cusp of actually getting a getting a first team uh, look. He, he apparently he also trained with the first team before he he joined. Um, so yeah, I mean it's a bit hard having not really seen much of either of the players to to to, to read a huge amount into it. But um, it's nice to see us branching out and bringing new faces in. Um, do you think do you think it's a possibility we'll see see Boateng maybe on, on a bench I, I, or two? I don't know because we we seem to have a history of making signings for the purpose of players with a you know with a promising upside who can potentially go through the development squad but we haven't really seen what the kind of path from the development squad to the first team is I mean now I think we're seeing a bit more of it and you know I felt we saw it under a little bit under Lukai I'd say Mm -hmm. yeah but uh, those moves kind of came seemingly came from a bit of desperation to kind of fill out the squad I mean if there's a time to bring in um, a youngster in any of those positions I mean Less so for Jade Nonan, even though, I mean, I think from his kind of uh, background, he's he's had a number of substitute appearances for Reading last year. Yes. So he's been in and around the first team a lot more, seemingly a lot more than Boateng. Boateng's, I think, professional, the bulk of his professional appearances, thanks uh, as Wikipedia is telling me, is for Total Network Solutions or the New Saints, <laughs> everyone's favorite, favoritely named Welsh club. Yeah, his caliber um, of football he's played at is pretty lowly. That's you know, there's promise in in the youngsters. It, but it, I don't know what the disconnect is between there between giving a player like Kieran Brennan more of a run out, mm. and you know there are there are more defenders that we've got at the club. I mean, I think we've talked previously about like um, like like what's his uh, what's the name of the young left back. He's out on loan at Wednesday night. Oh, Wednesday night. Uh, yes. Um, begins with a G, but I've, it's, I'm blanking on it as well. <laughs> oh, dear, that's not good. Uh, sorry, I'll try and pull it up quickly. Uh, <laughs> no worries. Ryan I don't know what the dis- Galvin? Ryan Galvin. Yes, thank you. Um, someone I, didn't who's probably had I, didn't more the, the... I didn't even get to the f- profiles on the website there. I got that. Oh, off bravo, the, off Rich. The, no, thank you. Thanks. I, I mean, it's, I did, it's, al- it's and almost that, that like one. it's almost like you've given a degree of your focus towards Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> Just a touch. I'm glad to join you in this. You know, have a a man who's also given a small degree of my focus to Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe more so this week that it's been a week for me, which I've been incredibly busy packing, getting things ready. Uh, wrapping up my current employment as well um, as I have a new job in the new year mm. and so running around like a blue ass fly has been um, what I've been doing this past week so I maybe I'll kind of give a <laughs> I don't think I'm going to have a very good performance I mean I'm speaking behind a mask I I'm tired beyond belief I haven't made many notes today this is not <laughs> the best of, of Lou Gledel performing on different gravy I but, mean you you're pretty much to uh, you know to a fault dialing it in today. I am. That's very true. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh dear. But um, I, I I think the thing that I'm still struggling with the connection is what is the difference between promising youngsters who we sign who come in on trial to feed into that development squad and the ones that we kind of have more of an idea that we've had more eyes on them in their development. Yeah. I mean, it was interesting midweek because I think I think it was the pre-match uh, presser for Crew today. I saw some comment where basically I think the press were asking about the press were asking Darren Moore about you know what about the the long-term futures of some of the some of the players at the club. I don't know if you saw um, his results from this. I'm actually no, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the the Wednesday website led to a link that didn't work, uh, which was uh, which was uh, my last sort of thing to check before we before we st- we hit re- record. 
Uh, so no, uh, have you got it? Uh, uh, did you sort of manage to digest it? Yeah, he he came out with some stuff which I'm I'm having difficulty kind of bringing this up. So maybe I'll see if I can just kind of buy some more time while it's kind of coming up. But it was I don't know. You know, we've we've talked before about Darren Moore's patter. It's sometimes quite good, but sometimes to the point where it's <laughs> it's pretty tedious. Yes, really in in teams of this. So you know, looking at this, I think it was here we go. This is thanks to this is thanks to that chap at the Examiner, you know, Mr. Don Housen. Mm. Is there a long-term plan for some of these youngsters? We know all about these players. Every time we have meetings in terms of staff, we know all about the players. Right. So that's an interesting opening gambit for talking about this. It it kind of makes me think that you don't know about these players, Darren. <laughs> I'm not filled with much kind of confidence from those get back no. kind of wording. So I'm sure there are players of the youngster that are training with the first team. Like I I wholeheartedly believe that's something that happens. How much preparation that is for any first team pitcher, I don't know. Yeah. Um I don't know. I I think it's just been especially because of um changings of standards, the relegation. I mean, there there seem to be a lot of official news. There seems to be more of eyes on the academy and its results from a Sheffield Wednesday perspective, a bit more so than usual, which is good for the sake of optics and uh, good for a bit of reporting and seeing how the academies are getting on. Yeah. But I, I still, I don't know. I think because historically we haven't had that, I think it's a change in the perspective as a fan where you're like, well, how, what, what mentality should we ever include and think of these people? From a first team perspective, I mean, Karidi adadoyan has been with the club for a couple of years now, right? Yeah, yeah. And someone we've talked about and has been mentioned about one of these players for the development squad with a view of progressing to first team. And Absolutely. yeah, it uh, seems to haven't really, the ship hasn't taken off yet, you know? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I suppose not every player has that classic academy background in the way that they come through. So mm. that's also it's a very kind of there's some notable examples that come through other other means and I'm just I I wonder with um, with Boateng I, the I, I'm not saying this is like for like and maybe uh, maybe the fact I'm making the comparison says something about some <laughs> latent uh, um, issues that I have uh, with myself but um, I, but I, I I was just I was intrigued by the fact that one of the best players we've seen so far this season against us was uh, Pantusha Camera at uh, at Plymouth and his background he he came through he, pl- he played for Dulwich Hamlet uh, before he he then moved on to sort of Crawley Town so he's he didn't have that classic you know he's not come from a big academy and worked his way through loan spells and things like that he just sort of presumably was released by a team early doors and, and went to play football. And that's where he he was able to shine. And I, I suppose not everybody is good at 20. Some people need those couple of years to get better. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We've just got to see, haven't we? I think where, the, where, where mm. this all, all shakes out, but it's hard to know what the route to the first team is in normal circumstances, because we've also had, you can argue that it's a self inflicted uh, injury crisis in some ways but with Kieran Brennan was out on loan until this injury crisis and now he's come back and everybody's saying what a great player he looks and how composed mm. he looks if if two or three people hadn't got injured would he have spent the rest of the season out on loan and then never had these opportunities it's there's a lot of mm. I know we talk about sliding doors an awful lot but there are a lot of those sort of moments in a football career um, I, I really, really would like a bit of news about the fact that we're talking to him about a contract. It would be so disappointing to have the same well, tired old story uh, that he talks off somewhere else. You know, you're happy and you're free as a football journalist to ask questions. And he probably knows Dom Housen with his experience and the now that he has as a skill set of doing his job. Yeah. He can't come outright and ask, that question because that's that's the lens yeah. which I would view that as a Sheffield Wednesday fan. Yeah. Um, but that question basically says, well, are you thinking about the youngsters? Are you thinking about their development? Like, yeah. and I think that's how Darren Moore reads it. But I think there's a bit of degree of what he was trying to ask is the other. Uh, yeah. Like, what you know? Are we you know 
to the main degree what's what's a contract issue regarding Kieran Brennan. Mm. And then maybe that dabbles down to the shallow end where we look at Alex Hunt. Yeah. You know? And I don't know. I don't know what the it it just seems to be I know times are difficult, but it just seems to be lowballing the prospect of professional deals for academy players. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. In tr- yeah, so there we go. There we've uh Seeming something seemingly positive, like signing a couple of players, we've turned into something, uh, some de- depressing dreck. But um, uh, let's talk about uh, the fact that uh, our pretty smashing um, month of November has been recognised in that Darren Moore was nominated for Manager of the Month. Mm-hmm. 11 points from five games and 11 goals from those five games. And uh, that, that got a got a nod from the powers that be. Um, he didn't win the award in the end. That was given to, to Danny Cowley, uh, who was his opposite number midweek. N- now, uh, you know, frozen in the stance that he was in when the, when the, uh, the volcano hit. Uh, and unfortunately for Danny Cowley, he was having a poo. Uh, so <laughs> he may be manager of the month, but history will remember him as as a man having a poo. Um, do you... <laughs> nice, though. I mean, I think it's uh, this... Uh, we've talked about this run of form. There was lots of draws and the fact that we've peppered in those wins there, it, it, mm. it sort of continues to show that we're, we're in pretty fine fettle. Uh, cup games aside, <laughs> it's, it's, been, it's been a pretty good, uh, a good few weeks for Wednesday, not just the month of November, but um, it's continued on into December as well. Pleasing. Fantastic, yeah. No, I mean, um, you know, despite kind of some questions about some of Darren Moore's credentials, I mean, it's been a, it's been a really fantastic run, and I think given the tools, he's doing what we kind of expect him to. And I, maybe I think there is time to me to kind of come outside of Ed and give some real uh, kudos to him for, especially I think really, I mean, we've had two clean sheets off two very mixed back frees. Mm. Yes. Yes. So. That's looking at this week, obviously, and then coming into, I mean, that was obviously prior to, that news, I take it was prior to me for us playing Paul Smith midweek. Is that correct? I would, well, I would think so. I'm not sh- it seemed to come out, yeah, it came out during the week, but uh, obviously they didn't have the announcement of who won on our, our site, so it had to find that elsewhere. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a little bit of like a who scored type points. Um, there's a bit of th- those kind of numbers go into these decisions. Uh, but do you know, just uh, in terms of not winning, it definitely feels they talk about the curse of manager of the month. And uh, this season, it feels like it's been really, really uh, hitting hitting home. So Lee Johnson was the first manager of the month in August. Uh, obviously sacked uh, a couple of, <laughs> couple of months later, <laughs> maybe just a month later. Uh, the MK Dons manager was next. That's a team that we uh, we we pretty handily beat at Hillsborough. Ryan Lowe was October's, and he's scurried off after 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 the form hit the buffers. Immediately after that, he scurried off to another job. And uh, who? Well, and we know poor Danny, Danny Cowley. The history's most famous uh, man pooing. So, uh, yeah, there we go. So, um, but it's nice to it's nice to get it recognised. It's nice to um, be in this sort of form. And I think when we look at the league table, it's we're we're now roundabouts where we mm. probably all feel that we should be with the squad we have. Um, well, maybe... I feel the interesting thing is previously, I think we've been in a similar position, but results have been pretty terrible. I will say, yeah. So this is more like we're in the position where I think we expect to be, like you said, but we're actually getting the results to kind of back that up. And I'm, I'm still a little bit staggered. We're out of the top six. I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty yeah. high performing, high performing top six. I would say just on goal difference at this point in time now. But yes, yeah, mm. it's, um, it's all pretty tight up there though, because it's because yeah, it's forty four points for Rotherham at the top, and then there's three teams on forty two. Um, and uh, yeah, the weird thing is, well, Wigan have only played twenty games. They've got two games in hand on everybody else. Uh, they they could uh, they could cement themselves of a, a bit of a lead at the top. Uh, but yeah, it's it's 
it's competitive. The top half of the table is pretty, well, the top 10 or so is pretty nip and tuck and competitive. There's nine points between the top 10. So it's, uh, mm. yeah, it's led to things being, in a weird way, sort of stagnant. You win a game and you don't really move very much. You know, and it's very much the last five. I mean, for the top eight teams, you've got seven who have pretty much been unbeaten. The only kind of antithesis of that is obviously the news midweek that Ryan Lowe swanned off to press the North End. Um, yeah. Which do you think that has, like, a, not quite the same magnitude, but do you get kind of similar feelings of similar feelings of Darren Moore at Doncaster? Uh, I can't... Maybe, because he... I think his form was maybe slightly on the turn, wasn't it, when he jumped ship? Mm. But then you have a weird, a weird element to say how much is, um, and we'll never know. And with, you know, I, I can't procrastinate knowing their kind of situation. But then you have a, a situation of saying, you know, is this down to any kind of crumbling of form, um, which is just kind of a series of timing, which is then carried on with the bad news of, you know, the person who's steering the ship, jumping ship, or how much of that kind of indicates something maybe a bad spell or, you mm. know, even more than that, something, something uh, foul becoming of um, Plymouth Argyle. Maybe, maybe, you know, they bit into their Cornish pasty and it's, uh, you know, they've managed to use some kind of dog food instead of, uh, instead of beef in there. Something along those lines, you know. Maybe. I mean, he's, he's obviously a very ambitious young manager. He's, He'd had a good start that was waning, but the, you know he'd had a good start there. I mean, most of his footballing career was spent in and around the northwest, which is where he was born. Mm. And this might just be an opportunity. You know, you, these, the, we do think of footballers uh, as auto, automatons, you know, at times, and forget that they've got a life outside of the game. Um, the fact that maybe. He's been, you know, Plymouth is so it's it's so far away from ev- anywhere, <laughs> even even Exeter because there's no good roads down there. Um, the so this this is there's a lifestyle part of it there. So he gets to go back to the to the area where he's familiar, comfortable, maybe where his family lives. I don't know whether they've de- they've all decamped uh, to uh, to to Plymouth. Um, and it's a step up. Uh, so mm. I, there's probably not anything more nefarious than that to it, but it, it is, it's just that you look at Plymouth's form, as you say, in, in contrast to the rest of the top top eight teams there, at least. Mm-hmm. And it is, I mean, they've sunk like a stone. They were topped by, a, a, I think, four points at one point. Mm-hmm. People were saying Plymouth are gone. You know, we need to think about second place. And they, you know, they're the ones that are, keeping us out of the playoff picture on goal difference. So mm-hmm. if they if their poor run of form continues and, and our similar good run, they're going to be, be surpassed by not just us, but also Portsmouth, you would think, and uh, in time, other teams. Um, so should we talk about Portsmouth now? Shall we? Let's do that. Yeah, that's on? a good... That's a good segue to hop on to. <laughs> and hopefully Rich and I won't fall off that segue a la George W. Bush. Oh, very good, very good. Mm-hmm. Um, Portsmouth uh, have that that man who's changed his name to Portsmouth who rings that bloody bell all game long and it is quite annoying to uh, to, to take in a game <laughs> at uh, uh, Pompey. Um the weirdest back three yet, do you think? Are you would you agree with me on that? Patterson, Palmer, and Johnson. It is impeccably strange. Though it <laughs> it's I, I think our you know, our general nature and our general fortitude has just been withered down <laughs> by like it just seemingly any professional footballer could be playing centre back. Yeah. I mean that's we could have we could have a game with Joe Wildsmith and Bailey Peacock Farrell on the pitch at the same time. <laughs> that's a striker a midfielder and a winger all uh, playing centre back for us mm-hmm. um, but weirdly <laughs> weirdly sort of effective we'll get into that but uh, yeah um, but no Dunkley Dunkley injured so it wasn't that he was uh, rested for the Johnson's Paint Trophy game he was he'd mm. obviously picked something up uh, Brennan misses out for the first time since he sort of came back um, 
and no Windass as well. So presumably he uh, he slipped on his slice of the action as well, and uh, it made him sore in a number of places, which is what Darren Moore said. How weird. What's what's your injury? Well, I've got a general soreness in some areas of my body. <laughs> <laughs> After that, we pop you on the ultrasound machine. Uh, <laughs> uh, this felt like it was going to be one of those awful evenings that we've all experienced as a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Fan. It started off like, you know, you see the lineup, it looked cobbled together. We started pretty lackadaisically. Uh, my first note is that we spent the first 20 minutes making, and we also had this Curse of the X thing with George Hurst, so we spent the first 20 minutes making young Hurst look like an absolute world beater. Um, it, to, his, you know, to his credit, he looked, he looked to be playing very directly, so when he got the ball, he was just sort of charging forward as fast as he could, and, and that, that was causing our, our cobbled-together defence some problems. Um, he had a one-on-one with Bailey Peacock Farrell that he really—that was probably his best chance and probably the one he should have—he should have scored that really. The one he hit with his left foot is the one I'm thinking of there. But he just mm. hit, it, hit it into Peacock Farrell's feet. Um, our efforts were mainly from long distance. The best of those probably being from Delhi Bashiru, the one that was—it uh, did look to come off the back of a, a of a Pompey defender. But there was no corner given because the uh, officials are universally awful in this league. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know how. What I, I mean, I, I've got sort of scattergun notes here rather than kind of minute by minute bits and pieces. But we we did eventually kind of cobble together some chances ourselves, um, mm. mainly around set pieces. It was we did. We didn't really get a lot going offensively in this game, it's fair to say. No, that was it. And I, I think there was never any there was never any threat of building up any momentum with going forward. No. And then I I don't know, like it, it felt with the outcome of the game and what happened and uh Luongo's sending off. Yes. It felt like that was a sacrifice <laughs> for the rest of the game. But probably to be a bit harsh and to look at this with a very critical eye. It was never like we were getting anywhere or building a momentum before that happened. It it wasn't really there to derail anything. I think there was a yeah. The, I think it's natural, probably when you've got when you're a bit worried about that back four in the way that everybody would have been. I think it's probably fairly natural that the defend the team as a whole probably thinks of defending as their first job. Um, and therefore, it does hold you back. You know, you're not committing men forward. You're not taking those chances. Mm. Um, the, the unfortunate thing, I think, though, as I say, the best chance, the best sort of moments we had was was set pieces. And, and Barry Bannon had a really poor night on the set pieces. Um, mm. We did have one good corner uh, where we sort of got it in around the ears of the the, the keeper and uh, almost came out with a goal. But after that, he just seemed to pass it to Benuzu, who gladly gathered the ball and then also looked to get them on the front foot. He was doing quite a nice job of of turning turning things around and sp- sort of spreading the play, a bit of playmaking from from goalkeeper. Um, there was Hunt was dragged down by his man and uh, the best chance of the game really came from that. We Bannon put in a great delivery. Gregory got a little sort of touch on it, uh, but unfortunately it deflected off a a Wednesday player. I think was it Patterson it came off. Can you remember that chance? Possibly. I don't remember that one. No. Um 43 minutes, an absolutely incredible save by Peacock Farrell. F- mm. Completely full stretch. Um as uh, a Pompey player sort of broke free of the defense and, and looked to curl it round him into the, the far corner one on one. And it just looked like it it might have got past him and then he seemed to just find an extra like three inches of reach in his uh in his uh his left hand to to poke it away. Um I said at about half time, Westwood shows his fairly limited punditry chops and Prun commits a cardinal sin at the break because he uh, he called us Sheffield United, that sod. Mm. Westwood, I don't know whether it's because he feels like he's there for... like I don't know whether he feels like he's been put there to kind of say something untoward, but his... <laughs> 
his general sort of punditry mode is like, I don't know, it's just like he's being asked, like, yeah, fair play. You know, he, he's earned, yeah. I mean, to be fair, he has earned his clean sheet. Uh, you know, and it's like well, nobody's like <laughs> accusing you. Like, I don't know. It's like he comes from a place of like, I should hate this man because he's got my job. <laughs> so therefore, mm. I have to give whatever praise I give has to be grudging and through gritted teeth. <laughs> oh, Kieran, how would your how would you rate your ex wife's new boyfriend? Yeah, to be fair, you know he he gives her the goods. You know, I can't you know I can't hold that against him. You know. Um, much as you know, I despise the man. Hate you know, want him to. I would like him to be dead. I, I won't kill him, but you know, I, but you know, he does the job. <laughs> um, slow start to the second half. Sort of wandered out. Uh, <laughs> it sort of trickled along until they had another really good chance from the edge of the box. That sort of vicious shot that another amazing Bailey Peacock Farrell save. Mm. Um, and then his probably his best save of the of the lot was at six, it was sixty six minutes uh, corner cleared but not properly corner kick taker is given all the time he likes to cross it again picks out a really good ball to the back post Curtis got up got a great head on it and headed it down it was hot it was like you know, it was moving fast and hard um, and Bailey Peacock Farrell sort of gets it up and out of the goal amazingly sort of pulled it from behind him uh, to almost drag it off the line uh, and then thankfully uh, George Hurst spoffed his follow-up uh, wider the goal um, but then, yeah, that's, as you mentioned, the pivotal moment, 69 minutes, tough, tough evening gets even harder with the sending off. Luongo is harried, turns his back, loses possession, and under a lot of pressure, loses control. He then l- lunges after the ball. Um, a clear sending off, right? I think so, yeah. You know, at the time, it's um, you can see um, with a very sympathetic Sheffield Wednesday lens is on to my glasses. You know, you can see how he's harried and pressured into that decision in that moment. But uh, you look back and you're like, yeah, that's that's not a good challenge. You know, and yeah, the, def- the definition of a challenge, which gets you ascending off in today's today's football environment. He's got the ball, but he's gone over the top of the ball. And that's the it's where you mm-hmm. it's the mm-hmm. contact you end up with that matters more than whether you touch a football or not nowadays. Um, so, yeah, um, it's a shame because it. He's a hard tackler, but I don't think he is a particularly dirty player generally. He's not a hutch type that's sort of looking to hurt people, but he does he does go in hard on tackles. <laughs> uh, but it's so unfortunate that, you know, this rare window of him being fit, we now waste three games of that with him sat on the Right. Side and then line. you remember last time, remember last time he was sent off, you know, actually he became injured during that period, right? Yeah, yeah. Hope, fingers crossed that doesn't happen again, but it is, it's really, I mean, the, the ongoing frustrating saga of Massimo Luongo is, uh, yeah, it just keeps having its twists and turns, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, not long after that, they had what looked like a very good chance, probably, uh, you know, her best chance of the second half, certainly, maybe his best chance of the game. Played through over the top. He looked offside, but it wasn't given. Um, and the ball sort of bounced to the edge of the box. Bailey Peacock Farrell charged out, and it looked to me in real time like Peacock Farrell took him out. Mm. Hurst touched it round him, and Peacock Farrell took him out. Um, I think on watching it back, uh, rather embarrassingly, they both just completely whiffed the ball and then fell over under their own momentum. They did. (laughs) And I think for all the slagging off of officials we've done, we have to praise them for reading that properly because, as I say, from from my my initial viewing at full pace, I probably would have. I was, you know, I was waiting on the worst happening, uh, and potentially another. It would have been probably another red card in that situation. Um, so, yeah, really well done to the to the officials to see that properly and uh, and just sort of wave play on as the ball was cleared afterwards. Um, I mean, I know we're going to have to play him again. But can we, after seeing that, kind of get over the hype with Hurst, do you think? Well, Is he any better than Vidane Oliver from what we've seen? No, but... Uh, I know he's got youth on his side. The still abilities for, uh, for Duff 
duff uh, centre forwards we'd uh, let go and gone and created careers for for us to shit ourselves over, right? You know, of course, like a, of you know, course, yeah. It it doesn't mean, and you know, I mean, there could be a parallel universe where you know former former lower league piggy journeyman shit house Chris Porter back <laughs> against us today. You know that that could be a possibility. So worst worst players have scored against us. You of know? course, yeah. You know, but the the narrative is thick with that one. It just, I don't know, like it was just bizarre because I mean, everything about it was geared up to. It, it just feels like Portsmouth selected him as a what as a as a wind up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Well, no, uh, on Sky they were very much at pains to let us know that they had three players injured. Actually, Portsmouth, and they were in the midst of a, a injury crisis, Luke. They, yeah. As the two teams came out, they said Wednesday have a couple of injuries themselves. It's like, have you seen that defense? Uh-huh. Biscuits and spittle is what we've made our defense out of. But yeah, poor old Pompey. <laughs> poor old Pompey. Uh, anyway, yeah. I, mm. I, I, I suppose I'm maybe being too harsh the other way because then there's a, there's always that that bit of. Um, spite when you when we've been sort of done over <laughs> in the way that we were with Hurst. I think that's the, the bitterest pill is that we were not only did we lose potentially a, a, a talent, um, but we were diddled by the system. You know, the, the the what Leicester did is disgraceful. I mean there's so much money in the Premier League and to deny us our tiny little scrap of it oh. is awful. Um and you don't know how much of a part Hurst played in that, but he certainly went along with it. He certainly didn't go, do you know what? doesn't feel right. This club's put the time into me and developed me. Maybe they should get a proper payday. Um, but then do you have that position as a player or do you just go, Premier League, yes, please, thank you, tick, tick. Um, but he's 22. He's played 48 games of football and scored in one of them, 48 games of uh, of English football, scored in one of them. I, I just feel like he's not going to play, you know, the, all the talk of him going to play for England and the next Vardy and et cetera, et cetera. It's very quickly going out the window. He looks like a work-a-day striker. Mm-hmm. He's not that quick. He's not that big. He's not that strong. He's not that good at finishing. Cue him scoring five goals <laughs> against us at Hillsborough. <laughs> but um, he's already played as a Hillsborough and looked pretty pretty average um, at a, pre- a previous club. Anyway, um, yeah, I, so just to f- sort of close things off, um, uh, Bannon, Bannon's corner's just gone straight to the keeper too often. Uh, using up our very few attacking moments, but also immediately putting him on the front put- foot. Um, Wing then st- stepped up to take a corner and goes one better by just hitting it straight out of play. Um, very few corners do you see hit the side netting on the near side, <laughs> but uh, Lewis Wing managed to serve one of those up. Um, <clears throat> that that's sort of it, really. There wasn't too much more incident, but uh, after the uh, the the one on one with Bailey Peacock Farrell. Um, Rightly named man of the match. This was a tour de force from from uh, the young goalkeeper. Just just fantastic. I mean, this is uh, this is the caliber of player he is, and this is what we know he's capable of. And you know, he's uh, had a few blips and blots in the copybook, but uh, you know, to to have to have a situation where uh, I think in most games he pulls off one decent to wildy wildy level save per match, and this was. Uh, this was like a season's highlight reel in a game. <laughs> it to totally was, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But this, so this, this is the sort of result you pick up when you're a team that is going to do well in a season. I think a tough night for various reasons: the selection headache ahead of time, the sending off during the game, not a good performance by any stretch. I mean, this was this was pretty poor from Wednesday, but mm-hmm. we survive against a form team. We keep a clean sheet. Um, it's got to go down as a fairly positive result at the end of the day. I think so too. And, uh, you know, having an amazing performance from our number one goalkeeper, which, uh, you know, especially after coming off the back of the previous game where we've given, you know, another run out to Wildsmith and he's led us down massively. Yeah. To be to be proven that there's such a golfing class between these two players and someone to 
stick with that number one shirt, even during times when I think I, like a number of Wednesdayites, you know, I've said this before, like during a bad spell, is it time to, you know, give Wildsmith a chance? Yeah. And, and we even did in one game. We did. And uh, Peacock Farrell has proved us, um, proved us wrong. Yeah. You know, to quite a substantial degree. And, and maybe also Wildsmith has let us down pretty massively in the process too. No, to keep too. it positive. <laughs> to keep it to keep it positive, that was a fantastic performance. Um, huge kudos for another another patchwork centre back um, yeah. put together and doing some really good business and doing some really good work there. So it's you know I'm I'm glad that I'm I'm glad that maybe my uh, my expectations are getting whittled down by Darren Moore for <laughs> to, 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 like who's <laughs> playing centre back because we're actually doing okay. We're doing we're doing okay right now i think so, it sort of happened on this idea that balance is the most important thing in the three, uh, mm-hmm. and i think he's being proved proven right uh so almost over personnel is the fact that you you have a you have a right footed player that can come out could come forward on the right hand side. You have a left footed player that can come forward on the left hand side, and then the person in the middle's job is just very simple to kind of mop up and tidy tidy up round them. Um, and Dunkley's done that incredibly well and impressively because he's he's like some sort of stone golem figure. <laughs> Um, Palmer plays it in a different way, but he's equally kind of quite good at it. I, I, I particularly thought that today there was a few times. We'll talk, you know, we'll, we'll we'll move on to that game now. But I really loved just there was a few times there was just like a crowd scene where things had dropped and there was maybe a couple of players from each side and it looked like crew were going to sort of burst through. And Palmer just calmly charged through the herd, took the ball away and just dealt with it. Um, and it's just really nice to see that third man. I, I, I'm not sort of conscious enough to know if this is kind of like a Libia, Libiero role or whatever. I'm sure like there's some Italian name for the type of defending that's, that's happening in that situation. Um, but it, mm. it's a bit sweeper. It's a bit, um, but it's freer than that. It's not just sitting behind things and watching things happen. It's also like breaking up things and break, bursting onto the scene. But um, yeah, nice to see. So t- so the, the, the lineup to today, Bailey Peacock Farrell uh, you know, returns to his starring role as a uh, number one goalkeeper. <laughs> we had Brennan back, which was nice. Nice to welcome him back, and he joined Palmer and Johnson at the back. Hunt and Corbino were the were the wing backs, and then we had Bannon wing and FDB in the middle, and Patterson up top with Gregory. Um, and yeah, as you noted, thirty uh, seven year old Chris Porter up top for for Crew. Uh, he turns 37. 38 tomorrow. Oh, he's their captain as well today. Happy birthday, a player I'm going to say is old as fuck, which means that he's my age. <laughs> that crusty old wreck of a human. I know. <laughs> I know you're talking about me, but uh, you know, Chris Chris Paul is only slightly better shape than I. Am. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, that's as you say. That's the, I was a little, even given his very senior years and his patchy at best goal scoring record, uh, I was a bit worried that he might be the sort of uh, might bring the sort of veteran savvy and being just a big man that sort of makes our defense shake a little bit. But yeah, uh, uh, well, f- thankfully, it wasn't brought to bear in any and in, in, in any sort of particular way. Um, so I missed this. I had some real stream issues today, which is great because you don't have no. no, have that many notes either. So um, this is going to be <laughs> this is very much the blind leading the blind. <laughs> I believe I missed a really early chance for Wednesday because um, my stream took a little while to come on board. Is that right? Which minute would that be about, Rich? Well, my first note is seventeen minutes. Uh, okay, is that the first time you got on board then? the stream uh i was there a little bit earlier but i don't think anything particularly noteworthy happened between 17 minutes and when i started watching which i can't quite remember <laughs> the minute uh i did notice something on the 15th minute. okay oh, so right, they, that was... maybe, I, maybe i joined on the 16th <laughs> <laughs> um it was the 15th minute when uh fizz was pulled back 
Oh, five, right. No, that's my eight, first note. Crew defender. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. I didn't <laughs> remember anything previous to tell you about beforehand. <laughs> it was a bit of a strange kind of stop start. It was a bit of a messy, it's a bit of a messy game overall, to truth be told, you know? I did also, by the way, sorry, I, I really, really wanted to go to this game. I um I don't have enough loyalty points or whatever priority points to get tickets very often to games, which is makes me upset. Uh, but uh, so I lost out. I, it, it, was, it was sold out before my window to buy came up. Um, so I was trying to to buy tickets through the crew website, but they were not allowing new accounts to buy tickets either. And then when you see the their stands about a quarter full, they, they must hate money. Why didn't they want 50 quid off me? Stupid idiots. Like, sorry, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Considering how well they stewarded anybody today, um, I, I was not going to be involved in any trouble. I live in Cheshire, so how, they don't know that I'm a Wednesday fan. Um, oh, sorry, that's my little rant out of the way. But I would have loved to have been there today. Well, I would like I would like to tick off some more grounds during this trip down to uh, to League One, which I hope is a, a brief one. Uh, a blip, but, yeah, a blip but... in our many second second tier storied, yes, you know, club, yeah, club history, yeah. But you hated it there. Why did you keep going back? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to talk about the awful set piece routine, Luke? Yeah, well, I, I, the, the the sheer beauty of sometimes making notes is you say something and then you're completely proven wrong. You know, you, pride comes before a fall. Yeah. And I was lamenting and laughing at the... The crew fans seemed very upset about the decision, which was quite funny because it was a pretty clear handling. It was a pretty clear tug on yeah. uh, Delhi Bashiru. And... But there was a situation where I was looking at and being like, you know, I, I don't know if that, that was such preventative needs. You know, it was I an mean, it was unnecessary foul, wasn't it? It was unnecessary from their perspective. So I was like, oh, what a, what a bunch of idiots these uh, crew <laughs> defenders are. And then we just had the worst set piece ever following that. I said, I said we're, we're treated to a set piece routine that simply doesn't work. It's a bit like the, mm. gigs, the one where Giggs and Skulls used to do, where they both go for it and then pretend to have an argument, but bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just, it was so, so poor. It was pitiful. Um, <clears throat> I think if Bannon takes a free kick quickly, it tends to be all right. When he has time to think about it, it goes to part. Mm. Um, I think it's interesting. So uh, my feed... Not only was it patchy, but it was also the crew commentary. So their reading of the of the Delhi Bashiru incident was a clear foul, quite far away from the ball, uh, probably clearly a yellow. And if the ball had, had been anywhere near Delhi Bashiru, it probably would have been a red card because he was just stopping him running clear through on goal. But the ball never quite <laughs> made it there. Mm. Um, do you? Would you join me in saying that this is one of the worst refereeing performances in in a pretty tasty bunch of refereeing uh, no i think we've seen worse like i don't know maybe again i'm just being you know my defense is just continually whistled down by what i see from sheffield wednesday in this league so you know bizarre darren Moore substitutions um <laughs> you know still this still this need for going with three defenders despite the fact we've got none. you know barely barely anybody is fit to be a you know defender and on top of that, you know, some of the some of the awful standard of refereeing at the third tier. It's well um some bad decisions, I will say. But I, 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 uh, well, I think it can I think it can get worse, Rich. Will be brutally honest with you. I'm sure it can get worse. I just in recent memory this was this was right up there, I thought. I thought it was a real mm -hmm. um you know he was he was really uh, he was he was touching the face of God in terms of uh, t t desperate 
refereeing <laughs> performances. I mean, the fact that my note was ref, ref is giving Wednesday a lot of free kicks. I mean, the fact I think he's biased to us um, really tells you that he must have been going some in terms of his being cowed by the louder bit of the crowd. Um, it, it just seemed like he was getting involved in things he didn't need to. He was blowing up for fouls that were just very minor contacts. Um, and quite often getting things getting things wrong, I thought. Um, and, and both ways, it did it did even up. Uh, when when Corbinu got booked later on, I th- I thought that was one of those where it's like I, I couldn't see how it was a foul given against him. Um, I know it's his own fault for then petulantly reacting and getting a yellow card, but mm. I, I sympathized with him because how is having your collar tugged as you run past somebody? How has he managed to foul someone with the collar of his shirt? You know, he was hoiked back like a, you know, like something out mm. of a comic book. Um, anyway, it's, a, yeah, just the ongoing frustration. Uh, my next note is the goal. I don't know if you have anything before that. I just said the camera angle's terrible. I mean, I know this is a, <laughs> I know this is a, you know, it's an interesting little ground, including it's, a lot of, a lot of interesting sand names, right? There's the, the ice cream van yes. man stand or something along those lines. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is Gresty, Gresty Road, which Gresty is always, Road, fantastic. Yeah. That always a fantastic name. Uh, <laughs> sponsored by Morn Flakes. Absolutely. Which, yeah. which is oatmeal, I guess, you have in the mornings, but uh, now I'm coming out with it. It sounds like a, a special dietary need for getting over some stage of grief, possibly. <laughs> you know, there's a it lot comes right after there. bargaining. Bargaining Krispies. Yeah, actually, yeah, maybe you can get like a, a selection box for each stage of the grieving process. <laughs> all, all with the view that uh, you can. Can you hear that? You can hear that. Okay, should we take a little break just to? No, give some, I think it's not. I love just it. Just to give respect to some of the whatever announcement <laughs> we have it in French as well. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Beautiful. God, it's just like this American life, isn't it, folks? <laughs> no need for NPR. Join Rich and I here on Different Gravy. <laughs> so, would you have? So, we we we've got bargaining crispies. I've just I've looked up the five stages of bereavement whilst we were listening. Mm. To the um, what what uh, what cereal would you pair with denial? Uh, well, I, I, I would naturally a very kind of denialies like Frosties, maybe. <laughs> I think or, it has to be something like childlike anyway, the denial one. has well, to be like I, a sugary I feel, kids. I feel unimaginative because I, I thought Rice Krispies and then I naturally just switch gears up to Ricicles. So denialicles. Nice. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, anger is next. Well, you go uh, Frosted Anger. Frosted Anger. You know, frosted shreddies kind of feeling. You know. Yeah, yeah. What What have you got after that? Uh, so then we've got the we've got bargaining crispies. We, that's covered already. Mm. We've mm-hmm. done. We've been there. Depression. Depression pops after corn Depression pops. Depression pops. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate chip. Chocolate chip depressions. Chocolate chip depressions. Yeah. And then acceptance is the last one. Uh, acceptance crunch or well, captain acceptance acceptance That's crunch fun. lovely stuff yeah do you have captain crunch in the UK we don't no oh okay well um, give it time give it time <laughs> what about what about acceptance Graham's like <laughs> cinema Graham's it's great I like that that's good <laughs> acceptance anyway. toast crunch <laughs> we're uh, we've done that that's that's a good it's a it's a good bit um <laughs> <laughs> multi grain acceptance <laughs> so we this was uh this was a lovely i mean bannon doesn't really score scruffy goals uh but no. this was an absolute belter <laughs> this um he just I, I think it sort of showed in his attitude all game today like today there were there were some hairy moments we'll get to those but really we we looked a good 
chunk better than crew throughout the game today and and obviously bannon and i think corbino were at the heart of us looking that that much better uh bannon they just could not get near him today um i think probably not helped by the fact that that needless yellow card that seems to be their kind of like nippy rat as dog sort of midfielder so the fact he was on a yellow from so early on probably meant he couldn't be quite so uh full on in his uh mm-hmm. his defending but yeah he just sort of put his head down drove forward with the ball a little one two with Delhi Bashiru cut inside and I mean nearly half the crew team bought the dummy as he turned it onto his left foot. He's left-footed, guys. I think if anybody knows anything about Bannon, he's left. He's going to want to put it on his left. But they all bought his little shoulder roll uh, move um, and then uh, just uh, fires it into the, into the corner at the near post from the edge of the box. Great goal. Really good goal. Mm. One to savour. And then ridiculously booked for over-celebrating. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I thought there was a weird mentality of like, oh, you've got a... I don't know. It was a weird one because there's been a lot of criticism, I think, about the Wednesday fans today, right? Yeah, people, well... People got a bit exuberant, a bit carried away, but I don't... I don't know. There's plenty of occasions where that doesn't happen. People have a fun time and, and don't stay on the pitch. It just looked like they didn't, they didn't, they didn't have enough people there to man the game. Mm. Usually, it's not that easy for these are not huge numbers. These are not thousands of people breaking through a formidable barrier. This was like ten teenagers just being allowed to walk onto the pitch. Mm. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying they're bla- they're idiots for doing it, um, but uh, it, it also felt like a failure of of stewarding. It just didn't look like there was enough people, or they weren't prepared for how boisterous an occasion it was going to be i don't really know what the difference is really between those situations because sometimes it's just there's some kind of spark amongst people right it's the power of crowds and yeah sometimes people you know do that and some people do that and it was the mentality i think to you know there's a pitch invasion later right so or a corner of it effectively you know yeah yeah strange strange um it was strange yeah, some strange handling from the referee. I will give you that. Um, it, it meant that with the the rest of the half had this weird vibe to it, didn't it? Because they so it took ages for the the game to kick off again after the goal because he was telling Bannon off and they were waiting for the the animals to be put back in the pen and things like that. You know, um, they were closing the gate after the horses bolted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so it just, I don't know, it just ended up the whole rest of the half just sort of felt like a bit baggy and weird. Um, we were lucky to, we were look, a little bit lucky not to kind of get stung by them uh, in the 34th minute. Hunt got done by his man. I thought number three for them, and I will look up his name, I'll do him the uh, the, the, the favour, of the, you know, the, <laughs> the service of that, uh, Adebisi. I thought he looked a decent player. I thought he, um, yeah. a couple of times he sort of took Hunt on and um, well, either tricked him or beat him for pace. That was probably true. I, I think I can agree with you there. I thought Lowry looked okay. Yeah, you know. Lowry looked good. Sort of dry. But Apparently I, he's a bit like, uh, he's a he's a player who is looking elsewhere for his next contract, a hmm. uh, young player. Well, Staggering is a player at 23 years of age who's had like 100-odd performances for crew. So yeah. he's... Is uh, maybe the fortune of coming up through Cruz Academy, and that you know that's a very clear door to the first team. It's Definitely. not much of a door; it's uh, something you just kind of step over. Yes. Maybe, maybe, maybe the door is a bit like you know you have that kind of uh, Veruca water mix. You know, you walk through when you go to the uh, when you go swimming. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's like that. Maybe that's how just how easy it is to get into the first team. <laughs> um, but it's clearly a talented player and someone who's really benefited from you know, establishing a pretty pretty well first team career of a yeah. you know, not many years of his career. So yeah. it's no good for him. And I, I wondered whether there was an element, I think they they mentioned on our commentary. Um, you know, they seem to say that crew kind of reminded Rob Staten of Doncaster in that right. they're a team who are a little bit tidy, neat and tidy, but don't really have any cutting edge. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Which I think kind of puts together a lot of League One sides. Definitely. You know, unfortunately, that's not a particularly uh, it's not a particularly great kind of description. You know, that really takes them outside of a lot of other teams. But um, uh, <laughs> how would they? How could I just ask you as well? Just a real pithy <laughs> note because this is quite funny. So, because I, I guess this was an interesting, like, because again, it, it's it's that weird thing. We're going away to a League One club, who are League One perennial kind of. You know, in their history, it seems like a lot of clubs are kind of yo-yoing between the third and fourth tier of English football, and yeah. crews seem to have that feel. And you know, they're a small outfit, they're a small club, they have small attendances. There's something wonderfully parochial and kind of naff and shitty and funny <laughs> about some of the things that they do, like some of the sponsorships and yes, all this round the ground. And the nature of this was like the camera was kind of based in the so. Do you reckon it's naturally kind of set up that for crew fans that they only get two sides of the ground and then they give? I don't, yeah, I was, I wasn't sure that maybe that was the concession to our big turnout out was that we got two stands and also weird to have a game where you see. I think I'm typically used to Hillsborough and seeing the the camera being done on the same side as the technical dugouts. Yeah. So weird to see, you know, the fans running over to celebrate. I'm like, oh, they're running over to celebrate with, you know, people in the technical area. It's like, no, that's the fans there. I'm like, okay. Um, (laughs) Weird element to kind of bring into this. So (laughs) Rob Staten said, looks like sausage rolls have been thrown onto the pitch. (laughs) (laughs) Was there any was there any commentary of any pastries being flung onto? They just said, I think they said the something had been thrown onto the pitch, but they didn't get as specific as sausage rolls. But that's rather funny. Mm. And it also made me wonder and kind of wish deliciously with a sponsorship of Mornflakes, whether there's a series of Wednesday fans who bought like a bunch of porridge, and then they just <laughs> just, just catapulted it onto the onto the pitch in disgust. You know. <laughs> And maybe a chance set up of fuck your mourn flakes or something along those lines. It would be quite nice, quite delicious. But I don't think that happened. It was very strange, though. Did you did you have any kind of uh, lovely fun tidbits from the crew commentary? Um, there wasn't a huge amount. As It was a bit frustrating because it was sort of like it was all quite broken up. So I didn't get the usual sort of experience of, of, of sort of listening in, which is normally quite fun. Um, but they... There was one moment when, the, so they had the co, the the sort of co, I don't know, the co-commentator um, said, "Oh, I've got a bit of a secret to say," and he so he, a few <laughs> like 10, 15 minutes later, he sort of said, "I actually used to go and watch Wednesday quite a lot when Don Megson was playing," and then uh, so then his his the commentator sort of said, "Oh, so have you got split loyalties today?" and uh, and he went. No, 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 I don't, no, not at all. Like, and then he was like, he doubled down. He was like, just hate, hating on Wednesday for the next like 10 minutes or so, just to try and make. <laughs> and I would not condone what they did that got them down here either. So, no, no. Funny. I don't know what we'd done really to get, you know. He mentioned Jordan Rhodes in that passage as well. At one point, paying out 10 million pounds for Jordan Rhodes. So that was that was quite enjoyable in just a kind of weird uh, twist of things. Have we really cheated though? If we've done shit with I know exactly. Stand? Like that's the overall arching thing. We've just been not that we're any claim to any kind of degree of like victimhood by spending ten million pounds on John Rhodes. But also, but uh, clearly, there's a bit of us having having you know poor financial taste in the market, and also having our trousers pulled down a little bit. You know, it's it's a combination yeah, of those. Yeah. You know. Well, also, we've never done that admin thing, which is really cheating because you're like just stealing money off generally like local suppliers when you're going to admin. Mm. Like, I mean, I I know we've overspent, but if overspending is the is the is that massive of a crime. <laughs> like everybody's overspending. There's very very <laughs> few football clubs, even in the Premier League, that make money. Uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, I know, but that's a that's a weird. The logic of a bitter know. of a bitter Wednesday, a bit a bitter football fan is uh, doesn't probably bear much scrutiny, to be honest, and probably some of our own mm. bits of prejudice. <laughs> don't, what? Uh, what are you talking thing. about? I am 
<laughs> I am impartial and correct in any hatred for any of the football clubs and football players. Um, it's all based on fact, proof. That's maybe. I mean, we've got a couple of notes here. Corbin of surges forward, dinks with a mini Christ turn, and then he rasps one low, but it was not too hard. Yeah, to that was a good out effort. The 36th minute. Um, and, the, and the keeper just sort of say, palmed it straight out as well, but there was nobody around, unfortunately. Forty uh, second minute, you know the uh, the the social media tag of Brennan Bauer was one <laughs> to play where he <laughs> he did a beautiful ping forward for he Gregory did. to bring it down, and Gregory did great work to take it down. It's just a shame the uh, the play kind of fizzled out after that. Yes, I must say. yeah. Anyway, so while I've mentioned. You know, that segue about like how, you know, I've never said anything that's kind of untoward or unfair. Uh, let's talk about uh, former Piglet Shithouse Chris Porter's penalty. Well, for, first off, on my, so granted, as, as we talked about, we ha- I had some issues with my feed. That did not look hmm. like a handball to me. No, it did not, Rich, which is where I'll probably get aboard your train okay. of saying this is a bad refereeing performance. Um, so, yeah, let's. You know, let's I mean, not jump ahead too much yeah. by by uh, talking about that as though it's a common commonality decision. If that's a penalty, we should have had two penalties in the second half. Yeah. To be honest with you, because there was one occasion where I'm like, one of our players goes down, we strike the ball. If it hits his midriff, then I guess that's a penalty now. Well, that's it, because I don't... So not only did I think it... If it, hit, if it had hit his hand from that range, yeah. from a shot... Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be harsh anyway because it was moving at such pace and he was so close. <laughs> yeah. But that doesn't matter because it hit his ribs. It didn't look like he it hit his arm at all. Yeah. yeah. Or not even the, oh. back, the back. Well, you know, it makes me wonder. I don't know if, if some of these uh, referees have a much better uh, look, of <laughs> look of anatomy than me and you do. Well, because, well, do you remember when, um, do you remember, I think when it was, um, Probably like the last kind of championship relegation season just over 10 years ago. Yeah. Do you remember? I think Wednesday were away at Forest and we conceded a penalty which had been judged to have like hit the top of Darren Purse's back of his arm. Yes. Yeah. And I remember it just being like, that's not his arm. Yeah. That's like, that's his shoulder. That's the back of his shoulder. Yeah. You know, that's that's his. So. You know, maybe these uh, referees have a better definition of, or a weirder definition of what an arm is. Maybe they're all maybe, phrenologists, Rich. Maybe he's got the, uh, maybe he's got the, um, he's got the, the whole world like wearing a vest or wearing a gilet thing wrong, and he thinks if it hits the gilet, it's a handball. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, very Beautiful. strange decision. Um, well. Well, that's the whole thing. So I, I, I also laughed a little bit at some of the commentary today because we had, uh, you know, Giddings, Giddings' mate, Brian Laws, you know, was only there with uh, Rob Staten. So I'm sure, I'm sure Andy Giddings was upset about that. I'm sure he was uh, forlornly looking at a picture of him and Brian when he was at, uh, <laughs> when he was at Doncaster, wherever the fuck he was today, and uh, imagining the good times he'd had with his mate Brian, including those bits where he goes down and... Uh, as a tattletale on Wednesday's uh, Wednesday's tactical now and history with the uh, anyone listen from the opposing media and or the uh, and or the opposing dressing room as well in the process. <laughs> uh, but Brian Laws said, like you know, his, his hands not in an, in, an unfamiliar position, <laughs> which I find very amusing. That's such a lovely Lawsism. <laughs> It makes me wonder, like, maybe, like, if your hand's in an unfamiliar position. <laughs> I don't know. It could be, like, um, really awkwardly deep down in a bucket of popcorn, perhaps. <laughs> you know, you could have slapped Normally, there's a penis in here. What's happened? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, you know, whatever we thought about the decision, we end up in a half that we've... I mean, it's the, it's a familiar position again. There's a lot of Groundhog Day with this season, this league, this Wednesday team. But a half we've dominated probably should do, be better than our one goal lead. Uh, mm-hmm. And we are facing, you know, 45th minute plus plus. Chris Porter's got a penalty. Mm-hmm. What what did you do with this penalty though, Luke? 
what did what did I do with this penalty? What did what, what, did, did, what did he do with this penalty? I was giving I you the what, juicy what the juicy moment <laughs> of explaining that he did the crappest penalty I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say he hit it down the middle. Um, I, so I mean that is bad. I will be honest. So I apologize that I I neshed. I nesh that beautiful through ball. But that's uh, okay. The, the Adam that, Reach of podcasting. <laughs> that's uh, Rich Yester spread it through to me. Um, but I, the only comment I have to say about that, which is maybe looking from a different angle, is Bailey Peacock Farrell read it like a well thumbed copy of Brideshead Revisited. He did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm as familiar with his penalty kick taking style as I am the classics. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as good as uh, the Odyssey, you know. <laughs> right heads revisited or Chris Porter's penalty. It's all the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> so poor, possibly poor, but I, I think a too clever mentality, you know. Well, it's rare that a set. So down, going down the middle in 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 a game very rarely gets saved because I think keepers feel the need to pick a side. Um, yeah. I think Peacock Farrell is athletic and big enough that I know uh, people have said he studies. So I think I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's an element of that as well, that he would may well have known there's a possibility he would go down the middle. Um, but he's way he's, I think he's confident in his ability and his movement to wait to see where the ball is going and react as well to an extent, but it's a great say. I mean, he's it, 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 you know rebounds off his uh, off his knee. Um, not only does he save the penalty, Porter has got enough about him to head the ball goalwards again, and Peacock Farrell saves that as well. He's mm. mint. That was brilliant. <laughs> That's what's in my notes. He's mint. Mm. <laughs> I mean, if we could uh, if we could talk about whoever the chap from MK Dons was, Twine, the other week has got like some of the best the best staff yeah. for like banging it in from outside the area. Bailey Peacock Farrell must be the best penalty stopper this season in European football, as we Surely. speak, right? Because he Surely. saved a couple for his national team as well. Yeah, he's doing it all over Europe. <laughs> some uh, <laughs> some DOS house in Estonia, or. Uh, some some crap hole in uh, Cheshire. He does it everywhere. <laughs> Saves them penos. Every position is familiar for his hands. <laughs> yeah, what an amazing stop. That smart one-handed dive stop. It looks so good. It it gives Great. me memories of not quite as low as you love you love a player heading low. Yes. And uh and the keeper getting down to kind of scoop it up. Yeah. You know. Like that, which is not quite that low, but still, it it has feelings of that. You know, great stop, great stop. Adds to adds to a very very uh, good week for for that young man. Um, there there was so there was more after the penalty. There was more of this weird malaise round the ground. <laughs> uh, some escapees from a stand. There's a bit, everybody getting a bit overexcited. There were sort of 10 Cheshire teens who walked directly into the nearest steward saying, hold me back, hold me back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so play was also held back as well. So we ended up in this odd position where there was a long time added for T- anyway, I think we played. We, we were supposed to play five minutes time added on, and it ended up being like seven or eight. Or it just felt interminable. The end of the half. I, um, I think on your coverage, you even managed to overhear them say, "This Gresty is going to get a bit testy." <laughs> well, they were actually saying because they were. I mean, I think they were conscious of the fact that there were about ten of them, um, and. <laughs> That, that that stand that they were trying to get into was full of Wednesday fans. And they were sort of saying, like, I think I'd be quite glad of the stewards if they think about it uh, in, in, a, in any sort of detail. Mm. Um, quite glad that the stewards have kept them from an absolute shooing. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, a very comfortable half, saved from a wholly undeserved 1-1 mm. at half time. Uh and my, my sort of note at half time was we need to learn our lesson from that and continue to push for a second goal. Cause I think after we scored the first, we did get a bit kind of 
lackadaisical and we didn't really push in the same way. Um, so, yeah, we needed to be on it second half because everybody can score in this league. Everybody can catch you. Uh, there's no, you know, no, nothing's done at half time. Um, any other sort of half time thoughts from yourself? Uh, no, no, strange game, but I'm glad we came in. We won nil to the good at that point, you know. Could have been rather yeah. staggeringly taken away from us, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, we don't know how we would have reacted if they'd got that equaliser. I think we would have felt rightly aggrieved. Uh, they would have obviously been a bit buoyed up. Uh, it might have been that we would thump them in the second half if they'd got their draw because we would just feel so, <laughs> uh, yeah, so so, uh, so hard done by. Um, I, so Apache first half on the streams uh, gave way to a truly awful second half. Uh, just glimpses amidst the buffering is what I put. Uh, but thankfully, my I did get one of those glimpses was a gorgeous picture perfect cross from Jack Hunt and a superb header from Lee Gregory. That was incredible. I mean, so you missed the. the I wish I could go back and look at the highlights now, but uh, not not. I piece from things it. together after the fact. Well, we we had like a really great cross. I think it was from the left. I might have been from Corbino or at least from his flank. Yeah, of which there was a touch on from Patterson, which looked like all he needs to do was just connect with it and get a goalwards, and he managed to just head it wide completely. Was there a penalty shout? Because they were t- that's what there's something they were talking about. They were saying there was a half-hearted penalty shout uh, on for Patterson. Don't recall that. I will no. be honest. Okay. Mm. But you know, we from there. I mean, I don't know if it was that chance, but you know, kind of moving forward, you know, it was very kind of quick. I mean, yeah. we came really out of the trap second half. I must say. You know, it seemed to be the players seemed to be really g'd up to kind of put this one to bed. Yes, I will be honest. And uh, you know, Gregory had a decent effort. It was a lovely effort, angle. wasn't it, from the edge of the box? And uh, really good save from yeah. the crew keeper. I was kind of staggered with that one. I will be honest. And then I think that's kind of led on to you know the chance being recycled further. And yeah, yeah Patterson did some nice nice work at that far post and uh, mm. got it back to Hunt. And the rest is, as they say, history. <laughs> it's a great I mean this is a it's a great cross it's a great header it's very poor defending from crew they look like they're completely gone to sleep yeah. um, but uh, yeah he got it he got it perfectly right um, nice to see Gregory back on the score sheet again. Uh, he's a he's been a very reliable goal scorer for us thus far which is nice it didn't look like it was going to be the case early doors oh but eight, eight goals and four assists I think now so, yeah very tidy um, there was there was a bit that so then it kind of there was a few the few chances for Wednesday we we kept sort of trying to to push forward and make things happen. Um, I I I, I put I was this is another note where I was proved wrong, but I've uh, I've said we could do with making this count. Uh, crew will have a chance or two, and we need to guard against that. Um, I also, it seemed like Patterson again in my little glimpses. Patterson was just like two or three feet away from making a real impact twice. There was a a cross that whizzed past him, and he threw himself at it, but just didn't quite get his get a toe on it at the end. And then Palmer fed him with a really lovely ball over the top that he just didn't quite get a touch on. So that let the defender catch up, and and uh, and and the goalkeeper kind of come out and deal with it. But that would have put him one on one with the keeper if he'd managed to to take that touch. Um, long spells of this second half, I just didn't have any feed for. So apologies Ooh. if I'm skipping incidents that happened. Um, the next note I've got is that Windass came on for Delhi Bashiru. I don't know if you've got anything in between times there. Ah no. I apologise. Sixty-six minute, I guess. Did you put the? Did you see the Patterson cracking one goalwards? Did we talk about that? Did you talk about that? Or oh no, so I didn't. No, I didn't see him have that shot. No, I was kind of staggered. We didn't bag, and then it was kind of a parry from the goalkeeper, and then Gregory got a touch on it with his head to react quickly. But it seemed like it was just there was just too much on the pace of the ball, right? And he just couldn't get there. And then you know the uh, the crew keeper managed to gather at that point. Um, and I don't really have much until uh, probably Windass is shot on the 60 sec- uh, uh, 76 minutes. If you well, have that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that was the 75th minute, a corner hung up to Patterson at the far post, and he sort of did a delicate floating effort back over the keeper's head. 
uh, which mm-hmm. unfortunately came off the post, I think. Uh, everybody yep. just sort of yep. stood and watched it. Um, mm. I thought it was Corbin, but maybe it was Windass uh, who picked up the rebound and hit a pretty vicious effort that was blocked on the line. I, I think is that's possibly one of those ones that uh, you'd like to see again from a, uh, a handball point of view, because it, it, I don't know quite how it was stopped. <laughs> Uh, mm. This was incredible because, I mean, we're 2-0 up and there was moments here where Bailey Peacock-Farrell was almost on the halfway line. Like, we were absolutely laying siege to their goal at times. Mm-hmm. Uh, this really could have been a much... Oh, we've got another lovely long announcement, have we? It's a long enough. Oh, oh it stopped. OK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Bailey Peacock-Farrell, there was a, yeah, a couple of moments where he was, yeah, was right at almost on the halfway line, uh, sort of picking up loose balls and passing, moving the ball along uh, to chance of shoot from the crowd as well. Um, but it, it, it's such a strange position to be in where it's we're playing like the team chasing the game, uh, despite the fact that we're 2-0 up and, and dominant. Uh, nice to see us keeping on it. I think we probably it feels like we've learned our lesson that we just cannot, we're not a team that can sit back and hold on to leads. We have to keep no, playing. No. Um, and, and if that is something that's got through to the the management team and the team themselves, that's no bad thing, it has to be said. <laughs> because how many years have we seen this kind of like trying to cling on for, you know, we get one goal ahead and we just stop playing. We stop doing all the things that got us a goal ahead. Um 83 minutes, Daz's favourite boy is about to come on. <laughs> Should he coincide? Oh, God. The most mediocre double act since Robson and Jerome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they came on for Corbino and Gregory, who both put in a fantastic shifts. Um, should just mention there was a really lovely moment when uh, Windass came on where Delhi Bashiru, because of this, the new rules, had to walk round the pitch. He came off at the nearest side, which meant he walked around sort of a third of the ground that was all Wednesday fans and was getting his name chanted as he went round. And uh, he looked chuffed to bits with it, which was really lovely. Um, he's such a likeable character, and it's nice to see nice to see him getting the plaudits. Um, we had a bit of a let off in the eighty seventh minute. Uh, a good ball in from the flank and Porter maybe cowed by his penalty miss decided rather than shoot or take it down he would sort of hang up a weird pass for his strike partner um it was it looked like a truly bizarre decision to make uh but uh, thankfully that led to a very easy clearance for Hunt um 90 minutes Berahino breaks over the halfway line joined by Windass there's one crew defender back uh, Berahino dawdles, gets caught, then eventually passes to an offside Windass. Pretty poor from both players. Windass has one job to stay onside. Berahino either has to get a shot away or play the pass, and he managed to do neither. Bit of yeah. a show of just how poor his form is at the moment, how uh, low on confidence he is at the moment. That was, should He should have just gobbled up that opportunity. The defender was marking Windass rather than... He was sort of asking Berahino to go ahead and take the chance, and Berahino was so determined to pass um, that the whole thing just fell apart, unfortunately. And uh, mm. Windas, I am remembering. You know, players get better as they as they uh, <laughs> in their absence. I am remembering now Windas uh, with his return to the first team, a man who is offside an awful lot uh, is mm. is Josh Windas. Uh, an inexplicable amount of offsides for for that man. Um, so the last thing that I missed in it, it, apparently Palmer had to clear one off the line after a Bailey Peacock Farrell flap. Yeah, it didn't really look like there's much in it. I'm going to be honest. Like when I say that, I, it wasn't a huge, a huge kind of stop. I'm going to be honest. Like this is the weird thing. I mean, like crew a team who were kind of mounting, trying to mount a lot of pressure, but. Mm. You know, not looking particularly dangerous. Like, I was never no. particularly concerned with what they did. I mean, I just, just want to kind of look at the stats. I mean, this is a team who are rock bottom of this league. You know, they've won three games this season, which two of them have come in the last five games. You know, 
they're a pretty poor side. Yeah, <laughs> poor no, that's fair. Side. And they've conceded 38 goals, which is um, possibly, I think, as it stands, I think something like the fourth worst in the league. Right, yeah. So a, a poor so, defence, not great coming forward. You know, um, and uh, possibly one of the lowest goal-scoring records in the league. I think they're probably about the joint third worst team going forward. So pretty poor all around. So I, I don't think you can ever really look at it and try and create any great narrative. Bless them. Yeah. They're, um, I, well, my notes at the end of the game were a really comfortable professional performance. And I said, I, I, this is maybe a bit kind of boisterous, but I said, we looked a whole division better than crew and thankfully got the goals to cement that. I think mm. they look like a League Two team. Mm-hmm. On our day, we'd hope that we look like a championship team, but we're certainly a good League One team. So that it just felt like that gap. It felt more like a cup game than it did a, a league game, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it was another one of these on the commentary that they, you know, they would they made noises early on that they just couldn't believe they were playing Sheffield Wednesday kind of thing. Um, <laughs> which I know in the past there have been times when Crew have been. Closer to Wednesday uh, on, on the in terms of on-pitch talent. But uh, yeah, there was a big gap today and, and Bannon personified that in many ways. Yeah, I can't believe we're playing Sheffield Wednesday. The <laughs> foolishly expensive Kardashian-level bank account in Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> Spendthrift Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Bring their profligate money bags to crew. <laughs> leaving a trail of filthy lucre behind them like grease <laughs> like snails Scooping moving around up our morn flakes and leaving us with dirty dirty cash <laughs> <laughs> um so i mean how do we want to, who do we want to pick as a standout man maybe maybe a standout man and a couple of honorable mentions today I mean, in this game, which, uh, sorry, crew, we pissed all over your morn flakes. <laughs> I think you're going to. That's a serving suggestion that. on the box. <laughs> One quart piss <laughs> for 30 grams of morn flakes. Oh, yeah, Bannon. Bannon maybe, maybe, today. maybe, you know, you get that co commentator <laughs> and you get, a, you get his boiled piss. <laughs> uh, Sheffield Wednesday have given him, and then you pour that over the top of the morn flakes. His his sort of heel turn as it, where it came to <laughs> Wednesday was a bit like I don't know if you've ever seen that clip of the Australian politician who's asked about the, the fact that gay marriage has passed, and he goes, oh, "You know, I love it. You know, may a thousand blossoms bloom." And then his face just completely like rictus turns into this grimace, and he's like, "But I won't spend a moment thinking about it because every five weeks, someone is killed by a crocodile in North Australia." <laughs> okay, no, no. If you've not seen the clip, I will try and put it in the show notes. But it's very, very awesome. funny because awesome, he's just like, awesome. "Oh." oh happy for them you know you my, my thousand blossoms bloom and then just completely his whole demeanor changes <laughs> and that's that's sort of what it was like oh i, I quite enjoyed watching wednesday back in the day oh do you like sheffield no i hate sheffield wednesday <laughs> <laughs> i should burn for their crimes spending anyway money. so despite crew's ire yes um, i think that we're gonna have to give it to uh we we Baz, Bade Barnum. We Baz was exceptional. <sighs> the thing is, though, is it such a comfortable win if Bailey Peacock Farrell doesn't make that double save? That's true. That's true. And uh, are you going to give a mild, a mild, uh, <laughs> a mild minor mark on the uh, Baz's Baz's copybook with his, uh, you know? <laughs> How dare he use the back of his rib cage to block a football? <laughs> yeah, his blatant handball with his left tit. <laughs> no, I thought I, I was. I felt Bannon was fantastic. I thought Gregory was mm-hmm. fantastic. I thought mm-hmm. Hunt looked really good. Brennan and Palmer stood out, um, and uh, Bailey Peacock Farrell. That that double save is is you know that's the clutch moment. He he. Mm. He saved the game there. Um, but I, I'm happy for it to go to Bannon. I think he 
That mm. I mean, his goal was just wonderful, and he he just was having fun today. It was really nice to see. This is a man, a master in in full pomp, just sort of doing his thing is uh, is a lovely thing to watch. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm happy. I won't begrudge Baz a Starman Award, but uh, awesome. Yeah, young young Bailey can uh, can enjoy his a hearty pims to himself, mm-hmm. uh, a well deserved <laughs> jug of pims for for Bailey. <laughs> Excellent. Can I just ask you, from your opinion, I I. You know, I watched the game. I watched a fair bit of it. Um, I thank you, Rich, for you know the look down on this beach and this one set of footprints. And that's from that's from when you carried me this episode, Rich. I'll be honest with you. And uh, as I was a man who was doing my passenger locator form in the early minutes of this game of football. Oh yeah. So I'm I'm doing all the things, and I'm very tired. And hopefully, I can sleep on the plane. And um, but from my kind of slightly distracted viewing of this game of football. I really want to ask you, Rich. Um, did Lewis Wing do anything? Do you know? Interesting. I was just, I was just looking that he. Uh, I was intrigued by the fact that he has a seven point three on. Mm. Uh, so this on, game of football or a game of football previously? <laughs> just or as a human. <laughs> just as a human. <laughs> For his lone spell. He's Robert bad Rimble. at football, but he yeah. gives a lot to charity. Actually, a lot of volunteer. Oh, work. there we go. There we go. Um. Mm-hmm. I don't <laughs> it's one of these I think it's a qualified um maybe a qualified success for wing just given his recent form that no I didn't notice a huge amount that he did <laughs> but I also didn't notice terrible things that he did you know there weren't the uh, usual right. atrocities it's the, it's the pal- <laughs> it's the Palapesi paradox isn't it it's the Palapesi paradox it's the Lewis wing anonymity factor um <laughs> if a if a wing plays football in the forest like bailey peacock farrell's eventual offspring he will be seen and not heard and that's the best way to to deal with uh, with wing. <laughs> <laughs> oh i just uh, every time i saw him like i wanted to kind of give some focus and i'm hoping that you know he comes back and he has a period you can edit this game. <laughs> I like it. It's all, oh, it's all, uh, it's all it grass all to the mill, Luke. I know. It just takes me off my... Uh, all grass to the mill. Uh takes me off my stride a little bit, I'll be honest. Anyway, I was trying to watch Lewis Wing and be like, this is an opportunity for him to establish himself in the first team picture. Yeah. You know, to have a run. And it just felt like every touch that he was in, in and around the box, was off. And I can't remember anything else he did. It just seemed whenever the focus was in outside the 18-yard box, he was a touch off it today and just seemed to always make a misplaced pass or a misplaced shot or any misplaced foot, I should say. Supposedly, he had 55 touches, 76% passing accuracy. He played one key pass. Uh, He played one cross, but it didn't get to the man. (laughs) Six long balls with two of them on target. He had a shot off target. Um, so I don't, yeah, I mean, I'm just intrigued. Ground duels, he won five of his seven ground duels. He won one of his one aerial duels, but he did lose possession 12 times. Uh, I don't know. A clearance, three interceptions, five times. A ground duels are when he uh, falls over and his balls such a floor. <laughs> Yeah, and he successfully <laughs> dipped enough <laughs> to ground that his jewels five out of the seven times that he, he tried to. <laughs> what a guy. 7.3. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't... I, I In a way, I sort of... <laughs> he's a... With a in the absence of Luongo, he... Mm. He does reliably kind of hang back a little bit. He doesn't get overexcited in the and leave us exposed in the midfield, which is a useful job to do. I know he's not hugely influential, uh, but he's a decent sort of size, as you can you know, he he can head the ball. He can be a bit of a shield for the defense. I don't know. I I I I would agree. I didn't see him do much today, but I, as I say, I didn't see him do much wrong either. So maybe maybe there's a there's a bit of a 
a qualified kind of pat on the back for Lewis Wayne. Mm. And I mean, I know I understand there's a mentality where like not all not all of these players can be star players, mm. you know. And maybe I don't want to be too harsh. It's more of a six and a, a C of sevens and eights today. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, just a little bit disappointing. Maybe hopefully there's some more games for him to get going. But what did you think of, um, just while we're doing a recap and talking about players today, um, what, did, what did you think about Patterson up front today? Well, as, as one of my notes earlier was it felt like he was sort of two, two or three feet away from being really influential at several moments. Mm. Um, you can't, the thing is, he brings, a, he brings like bucket loads of enthusiasm to everything, doesn't he? He does. Like, so, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, the Manda, the Manda Florian, uh, <laughs> Mr. Camberry. Yeah. Like, I've been enjoying and I think he's been good, but we just, you don't get anywhere near that work rate and gusto that yeah. you get from uh, Callum Calump. I think he was a little unlucky, probably, Camberry to be dropped because I don't, I think he has, he's a, a sim, he gives you a level of performance and I, I think he is mm. a bit of an awkward bugger to play against. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I t- so did you? What did you think of of Patterson's performance? Well, I thought he was good. I mean, I I think I'm I can be happy and generous enough from another Wednesday win and what twelve games unbeaten or something ridiculous we've got now to look back on this and say, you know, it's not going to be everyone's day. But I think sometimes you see elements there of things that could probably come together in the future. Um, yeah. I think in the way of two failed performances. It's kind of harsh to say failed, but like not executed in the world of Gregory and you know yeah. uh, Peacock Fowl and Bannon. Those are yeah. the three top performers. Like it's 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 difficult to say with like Wing put Wing and Patson in the same sentence, but I think you know there could well still be more to come from Wing. I really bloody hope so. Like it's yeah. it's not going well for him, and there's a lot of issues there. You know, I I understand that. Don't get me wrong. From initial um, expectations, where we're at is pretty disappointing, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's completely the case. But I, I mean, kind of outside of that, um, I, I, I felt it didn't work for Patterson today. But like, there was so much work rate. Andy was so close that I feel it was a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, and maybe hopefully for Lewis Wing for his standard, maybe him just working hard is hopefully maybe it'll come. I know like there's a weird element with Lewis Wing where I think he's. You know, he's a player who can kind of chip in around the goals and assists, but I kind of view him in a, a certain lens to Bannon. Like, you know, good, but not not fantastic. Yeah. Not like a powerhouse in terms of those stats. Yeah. So, <coughs> yeah, like, maybe he'll keep coming and he'll keep working for Wing and for Patterson next time. You know? Yeah, it's interesting because he was absolutely like, there were so many moments of Patterson absolutely like booking it after the ball. Mm. But then that part of me, it happens so often. I mean, that's great work, great. It's nice to see him chasing some pull pal and chasing, chasing lost causes to an extent. But it's also mm-hmm. like when it happens like four or five times, you're like, how why are you so far away from where the ball is though? Like how are you <laughs> yeah. that far off the pace? Um I don't know. It's 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 interesting because I I've of all the Groundhog Day moments, I, I feel like I've seen that moment of him sliding at the back post and not quite connecting with the cross so many times this season. Mm. Um and it it just it speaks to someone that he's not a natural. He's not a natural sort of predator in the box. You know, he's not reading things and making. G- Gregory has that. Well, not always, but sometimes <laughs> he has that kind of yard in his head thing. I don't think there's any yards in Patterson's head. It all has <laughs> to be with his legs, um, and sometimes that's okay. But it, it does mean we miss out on things. I don't. Mm. But he did. He put in a shift. Uh, unlucky that header was quite was a, was quite nice the one he sort of hung up um, unlucky that that hit the post you know at the very least that could have been an, an assist uh, if not a goal mm. for himself um, <laughs> and it's tricky because I think yeah neither of them are the ideal foil for Gregory Canberry or him and if <laughs> an idealised version sorry to do ideal twice 
if if Berahino was what he was, you know, what, what was supposed to be on the team, that's the sort of player you probably want to see alongside Gregory. Someone mm-hmm. with a bit more pace, who kind of reads things, wants to get in behind. Unfortunately, that's not the Berahino we've got. We've got this timid little mouse. Uh, so in the absence of that, I don't, I, I'm happy to keep chopping and changing, really, until one mm. of them either establishes themselves or we find, you know, actually for this sort of defence, Canberra's the better option. For that sort of defence, you want Patterson. And possibly mm. it will end up being away from home. At home is the thing, but by and large. Um, if we're if we're away from home and expected to be chasing the game a bit more, you probably want Patterson's sort of all action getting after it. If you're at home, maybe you want Canberra because he's going to be Johnny on the spot and take the chances when they happen. Yeah, it's mm. not the worst conundrum to have. Mm. <laughs> uh, well, is that is that us for the? I think it may be. Yeah. The bizarre yeah. airport episode, as it will be known for in years to come. We, we did another bizarre airport episode before, didn't we? I think we did. I've, I've, oh. I've had, I've had that strange deja vu all over again when it comes to uh, stopping for airport uh, announcements. So yeah, we must huh. have done this previously, but obviously the mask is an added. Yeah, and I do apologise for that. So that's uh, hopefully. Hopefully a one-off. That's not happening. Luke, you, know. you mustn't. Luke, you mustn't apologise. You mustn't. <laughs> one is looking after oneself. One is looking after one's community. No. Please. Please, no. Who, who are you supposed to be there, Rich? I don't know. Just this man that is very concerned, knows about masks. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit Tony Ben, but it wasn't all the way Tony Ben. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. Ooh. I'm going to let you go and uh, browse disappointing news agents. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, maybe have a poo in too close proximity to another human being. <laughs> um, these are all these are all airport things. Think it about like sitting on a do. massage chair, then think about how many people have sat on that massage chair. <laughs> mm. That is a problem. <laughs> Just how relaxed were they on that massage chair? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you've already hit up Chili's, which is a which is a must do. An airport. I know, do. I know. You've, you've only, ticked off that particular. Only gone and ratty, gone to Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> the poshest of all uh, two bit chain restaurant establishments. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly, Rich. Well, yeah. So uh, next time we speak, you'll be on terra firma in in uh, the UK. I'm, and, r- uh, I really hope so. Yeah. Yeah, face to face. It's been a hot minute since I've seen you uh, in the flesh, Rich. It has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be weird, but nice, nice weird. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll have. Accrington Stanley to talk about a second he match in, in short order with Accrington Stanley. Uh-huh. Um, I, I'm, str- I'm, I'm already struggling to remember that game, but uh, I've, I, that was the one we just absolutely stormed to a to a, a three uh, uh, three goals and then uh, spent the last sort of five minutes, ten minutes chewing our fingernails. Is that right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That, that doesn't sound like a Sheffield Wednesday match at all. Oh, not at all. No. <laughs> well, scoring three goals is a rare occurrence, isn't it? But um, <laughs> absolutely clinging on for dear life at the end is uh, is all too familiar. Mm-hmm. Um, great. Well, yeah. Um, look after yourselves, folks, and uh, safe travels to you, Luke, and uh, see you see you on the other side. I'll see you then, Rich. Cheers, we are, folks. See everybody. Bye bye.